This is Dr. Tom Rozelle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rozelle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rozelle Live. This is Dr. Tom Rozelle. Indeed, we're live in a beautiful, beautiful Washington Metropolitan Day. Make sure you get outside and get some sunlight. You know, that vitamin D that you need to keep your immune system where it needs to be. We have a great program for you today, and we're going to be talking about something that is unfortunately getting much more common than it should, and one that you need to know about. And But just remember, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on right now, the one thing that you've heard me stress over and over and over again is immunological support and keeping things where they need to be because we're seeing way too many people with immune systems that begin to crash. But nevertheless, we're here for you today with a great program. We're going to be talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And what does that mean? That's an autoimmune condition of the thyroid. But having said that, we'd love to take your phone calls on anything you'd like to talk about. We're here at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Give us a call and let us know how we can serve and help you. My guest today, none other than Dr. Qinglong Zhang. And we're going to be talking about the, the thyroid gland. And Hashimoto's is a thyroid disorder. It's an autoimmune condition. Anyway, welcome, Dr. Zhang. Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Rosell. I hope everybody is doing well right now at home. And then, just like Dr. Rosell said, we you should get outside to get some vitamin D and then build that immune system. So today, we talk about Hashimoto disease. Uh, so a lot of people know Hashimoto is a thyroid issue. But for most people, some people don't know the Hashimoto is autoimmune problem. And actually, it's very, very common uh, in U.S. right now, Hashimoto. So Hashimoto disease is very, very common in the United States. It's about five people out of 100. So here, so you got five people. You're, you're talking about 5% of the population. That's a big Correct. number when it comes to any kind of immunological reaction. And the thing that is, it's growing. It's actually getting more over a period of time. It's projected to continue to expand. So when that happens, and you made a statement, the statement is it's very, very uh, common or much more so in the United States than any place else in the world. So that means the United States has some problems. And I'm going to bring that into our conversation as we go through. But when you see that a condition is more virulent in one area or the other, so it really comes down to is, the, uh, is that country's immune system globally uh, not in a good place? Is there more exposures to certain situations? And subsequently, there's going to be more reaction and immunological responses by the way, the answer to both of those questions is yes. In the United States, we have both of those issues going on. Right, and, right. you know, you know, because, you know, you're from Shanghai and, right. you know, originally, and we can go there and we don't see the, the prevalence, the predominance of these <laughs> types of conditions. You know, you know, I've been there a couple of times and, you know, it's, it's very different, but that's a, that's a conversation that we can have on a different program, but right now we're talking about Hashimoto's. So so walk me through Hashimoto's and, you know, our audience as well. Uh, You know, how, how does it develop? uh, You know, why do we have so much of it? You just, you know, here in the United States. It's a great question. It's a great question. So, so everything happened because of some reason. So same as Hashimoto. So nowadays, a lot of people are exposed to, there's a word called halides, halides and estrogen. So estrogen exposure is so much, even though you cannot, you don't, you don't aware, aware that. Where's I? How can I expose to estrogen? For example, a lot of people take birth control pills. 
But however, the birth control pills can go to the water, and then you drink the water and go to your body. That's another extraordinary expose. That means, guys, and, you get that too. You know, if, and by the way, I just want to give you a statistic on that: eighty yeah. percent of all estrogen supplementations, birth control pills, and women who are on on uh, uh, bioidentical hormones and so forth, you don't use. A lot of it. And so your body gets rid of it and you urinate it out into the water, the toilet. And in our area, and here's the problem, is that in our area, we're in what's called a water reclamation area. That means they take your, your sewage water, your toilet water, and they reprocess it. And they try to clean out all the stuff and they put a lot of that, part of it, back into the water supply that you go get a cup of tea from and so forth. And if that water is not then filtered additionally, you can't, and you, you start accumulating, you start accumulating all these things in your body. Anyway, that's, that's the reason that we see that. Yes. Actually, you know, in their um, study in form 2011, actually, the researchers, you know, examined the rule that how estrogen level can cause the, the thyroid problem. The research, the conclusion is, the 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 the, the rule that the estrogen level have on uh, thyroid receptors they can affect each other. That's why the when you have the Hashimoto and plus if you're in menopause age, it make it worse. It make it worse. And also they, they try to confirm its conclusion. You know, this research is not research that okay. So they they treat some people who has who is you know, uh, who are in menopause. Treated the thyroid function. After the thyroid function get better, the menopause symptoms gone. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. And, and, and that's, that's the you know there's you brought up an interesting point with you know the estrogenics. You know we call them xenoestrogens or estrogens that are environmental that impact the body. But Cut. there's two reasons estrogen levels get so high. Right. One is simply because of these external sources of estrogenics. And some of them are electromagnetic, are, are low volt electromagnetic fields, all the stuff that's out there. The things that they put into animals, the things that they put into the water supply, things that they put into uh, uh, fertilization and so forth. And makeup, makeups. That's, and makeup. And ladies, <laughs> yeah, right. you don't realize that a lot of your makeups have high levels of estrogen. But here's the thing. There's, there's more and more men now that are suffering from the effects of an environmental estrogenics as well as women because of all the environmental exposures. So when we say that it's unblunted, it's not being taken care of, it's because there's not enough progesterone in the body to blunt it. So we're seeing not only thyroid problems, but we're seeing cancers as well. But that's, mm. you know, I'm getting off on a, a different divergent, but that's that's really what you're looking at. That's, that's right. But same thing, if there's too much estrogen in the body, it not only affects your thyroid function, thyroid function and vice, vice versa, and the thyroid function can cause estrogen problem too. And that's why more and more people, more and more, and more female, develop the fibroid, fibroid a lot right now. So yeah, this is not story. So yes, the estrogen level had to be very careful. So how you eat, how you drink, we talk about if you exposed to uh, hair lights. Halides can significantly affect your thyroid function. Well, halide, uh, you know, a halide, we're, when we talk about halides, uh, yeah. we're, we're talking about a place on the chemical chart. These are heavy, heavy atoms. And right. so, you know, we know that iodine is a, is a uh, halide and it has to be present for your thyroid to be able to produce Correct. the hormone that's also, necessary, right? Yeah. Claro, claro, um, the brown brownie and uh, claroing, it's all highlands. But however, if you take too much these other uh, highlands uh, other than the iodine, it will compete the iodine receptors. That means if you take too much of the others, your body have a very hard time to collect the iodine. So that's a cause of problem too. The water, all the water, the, the actually the, the, the nasal sprays, the pesticides, uh, and you know, swimming pools. That's why we're recommending people, if you take some food, try your best to get very, very, uh, natural food, organic or, um, organic food. There's no sprays, no pesticides. You know, this is, this is a very interesting, uh, conversation simply because of the fact that any, autoimmune condition that already exists is going to predispose itself to other autoimmune conditions. 
example of what I'm talking about is you have conditions like Sjogren's, you have conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, you have conditions like lupus. And these autoimmune uh, conditions uh, then create a perfect environment where the thyroid antibodies uh, become more damaging to these people. And so they end up with much more of a susceptibility and much more of a uh, an end product damage than somebody else who would not. But, you know, at the end of the day, what I want people to know is that this is reversible. And, you know, uh, Dr. Zhang is going to be doing our uh, online presentation this Wednesday evening. And all you have to do if you'd like to register for that and, and get this information in the privacy of your own home to be able to look at it and then always to ask questions. You can call Dr. Zhang at the Roselle Center for Healing anytime and he'll get back to you. But go online, go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com. And just uh, register. You'll see the, the uh, little ad and probably about a third of the way down and says Hashimoto's thyroiditis uh, presentation. You click it, you sign in for it, we'll send you the data and uh, it's our gift to you. We're, we're delighted to make that happen for you. Dr. Zhang, we got a couple yeah. minutes before the break and you know, let's talk about a little bit of, about the, uh, the misdiagnosis, if you will, of a thyroiditis right. oh, you know, compared yeah. to other situations. Yeah, so actually, the, 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 a lot of people will come in, um, present a lot of symptoms. I will tell you more about the symptoms of Hashimoto. So then I said, okay, I have this problem. For example, I have the uh, fatigue or constipation or, um, or slow heart rate. But, you know, it diagnoses me as a heart problem. I said, okay, so why done, done is heart problem? Is there any, um, EKG or any cardiogram or any, any diagnosis too in the, the test to tell you your heart problem problem or some, something else? So no, it's just based on my symptoms. I said, based on the symptoms, there's a lot of reason cause that problem. You cannot, oh, you just say, okay, it's hard, it's hard. No, actually the Hashimoto, can significantly cause a heart problem too, a slow your heart rate. So how, the patient have another question come out and say, okay, you see, my thyroid, thyroid uh, test is normal. I said, okay, where, bring to me where the thyroid, thyroid test, okay, TSH level, normal, down. I said, okay. So TSH level is not only one to invalidate the thyroid. So there's a bunch of different, the, the values can evaluate your thyroid. That's why a lot of medical doctors, even the medical doctors, not only here, but also in China too, they misdiagnose the thyroid problem as the other problems because they don't know there's a very comprehensive diagnosis too, diagnosis too to evaluate the thyroid. T3, T4, reverse T3, free T3, reverse T4. Thyroid antibody, all these concerns can invalidate the thyroid. You know, here's an interesting situation. I wanted to touch on it before we go to break. You know, that when we see somebody who has, in most physicians, they have a high elevated level of TPO, which is thyroid peroxidase antibody, and we see thyroid globulin antibodies. That's your your absolute diagnosis. The patient has this type of problem. But the situation is, as those situ uh, those uh, antibodies rise, it's not necessarily true. You have to put other things in a position as well. We're coming up to a break. I'm going to explore that a little bit more. My guest today, Dr. Zhang, and we're talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and we want you to have that information. His presentation will be this Wednesday. We'll let you know more about that. Don't go away. We'll be right back after some important messages. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. Yes, we are indeed. Beautiful day in Washington. Make sure you get a chance to go out and enjoy it. Go for a walk, stretch a little bit, get your vitamin D. You know how important that is. And that means outside, you know, exposing a lot of your body to the beautiful rays. And we all need it, but you got to be out there for at least 45 minutes in direct sunlight. Having said that, you know, our program today is on a very 
interesting condition, but one that's growing exponentially within the United States. It's called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And when we talk about a thyroiditis, it means that there's an inflammatory reaction that's going on. My guest today, Dr. Zhang, and he's going to be looking at this thing. And this Wednesday evening, he'll be your presenter. He'll be sending you data for those of you who want to learn more about this and how to fix it and what can be done about it. Um, Simply go to rosellecare.com, that's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com, and sign up for the lecture. It'll be sent to you in the privacy of your own home, and we'll get it done. And by the way, just as a heads up, in a couple of weeks, we're going to go back to our in-house uh, lectures, and we're, we're, we've been working on a way to make them very safe for you, and so you can come in, and you can get one-on-one, -on -one, you can ask questions, and so forth, but we'll get to tell you about more of that next week. Having said that, I want to go to the phones. Joan, you've been extremely patient. How can I help you? Well, thanks for taking my call. I have a 91-year-old sister. She went in the hospital. She had lots of tests done. They recommended she go to rehab, and she was has been there for a week. Now she just got the diagnosis that she has C. diff, and I'm afraid that is going to be the beginning of the end. Well, with somebody that old, any kind of life-threatening infection like C. diff can be can extremely serious uh, because it can cause all kinds of other things. You know, the, the infection uh, basically is clostridium difficile. Uh, the last part is spelled D-I-F-F-I-C-L-E. Um, it's, it's an autoimmune problem, and it can be triggered by lots of things. People have been in antibiotic uh, therapy, you know, to knock out other types of bacterial infections can cause the intestinal tract where you have tons of uh, bacterium that are protective to you uh, to be destroyed and now your immunological responses go down. So this one bug, which is resistant to most of that stuff, begins to take over. Um, but it, the C. diff, is, it really exists around us uh, everywhere, in the air, in the water, the soil, uh, in stools of animals and humans. Uh, you know, it, it, in most situations, you know, we live with this constantly and we never have any symptoms whatsoever, but it's usually spread uh, believe it or not, in healthcare facilities and, you know, in nursing homes and hospitals and so forth. That's where we see the greatest incidence of this stuff. So what you're dealing with, and the biggest problem with C. diff is that, you know, the, not only the symptoms that come about, but the fact that it's dramatically dropping your immunological response and making you more susceptible to all kinds of things. But you can end up with colitis from it, and you can end up with all kinds of bowel breakdown that even makes worse. But the end product is it also can cause the intestinal tract to rupture. And now you have a systemic infection. So it has to be dealt with the right way. You, you know, we, uh, in people who are not healthy, it becomes a challenge. People who are healthy, it's still a challenge, but it's, uh, it's more doable. One of the things that uh, it has been used throughout the world is actually a fecal implant from somebody who is healthy and has a really strong uh, intestinal tract, um, but the antibiotics, you know, kill so many different types of uh, bacterium, not only the bad guys, but the good guys, and it sets you up with the, the symptoms, you know, everything from the abdominal cramping to diarrhea to, you know, significant amount of, of nausea and fatigue, and the body becomes dehydrated because it's, you're losing all of this uh, fluid through the, the intestinal tract. The way that it can be treated, uh, you got to calm that system down. You have to do, you have to uh, support immunological responses in the body, in the gut, in the colon, by putting good types of bacteria in, by high levels that aren't destroyed and killed by the acid within the stomach. Um, so it's not necessarily a death sentence, but if if it's not treated properly, uh, it, obviously it can be very severe. And somebody that age, at 91 years old, uh, is not in a good place to be able to fight this, particularly if they have other types of conditions as well. And the heart also can be a problem because with any kind of an inflammatory response, uh, you got a problem. But the, the colon itself in, in a C. diff expands and it gets large and it becomes irritated. And that's where you get the bowel perforation. And then, as I said earlier, the bacteria escapes into the uh, intestinal tract. So there's, you know, you have to go after it with 
re-implanting good bacteria within the gut. And a lot of it has to be done rectally so it can get to the, the colon very, very uh, quickly. It's actually a, a topic we could talk about for uh, another hour, Joan. But it, here's what I would tell you to do. Send me a note through rosellecare.com and I'll give you some suggestions and the things I would do if this was somebody in my family. I'm sorry we don't have a lot of time. We're coming up to a break. But if you do that, I promise I'll get back to you within the next uh, you know, 48 hours. Anyway, we're coming up to a break. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Indeed, we are. Gorgeous day. Make sure you get outside and enjoy it. And by the way, please remember, you know, when you're outside, you're walking around, don't put the mask on. You need to have fresh air. You're not going to be exposed. The stuff doesn't come from the treetops and jump your bones. It's not going mm-hmm. to say, oh, I see Mary walking down there and go mm-hmm. after you. No, look, you need to just get out, enjoy your families, you know, obviously stay away from large clouds crowds do things that are you know naturally judicious you know obviously wash your hands and and you know you don't want to cough in anybody's hand or face you don't want to swap spit with them as the kids would say you don't want to drink out of every anybody else's glass and things of that nature enjoy the outdoors and do it without gla- uh, gloves on and do it without a face mask on now if you go inside you got to go to a store you have to do you know you do what you have to do in our practice we have an environment that is safe. We ask you when you're coming into our reception area and you're in the office to please wear a uh, facial covering. And, you know, we try to make everybody as comfortable as we possibly can uh, that way. But understand that when you're out there, this is not something that is going to attack you from above down. And, you know, you want to get into, you know, uh, other opinions that I have about this, we'll talk about that. You can send me a note. I'll tell you my information. You know, but you can also, you're welcome to go to my Facebook page. Just go to uh, Dr. Tom Rosell or Tom Rosell. You'll find it. It's there. And uh, I publish all kinds of very factual information on two, three times a week basis. So enjoy it. If you have a question, you send me a note. I'll give you all the data that you need to have. My job is to tell you the truth to protect you, to make sure you have all the information that you need to bring up your immune system, to get you out of a fear pattern, to make sh- and let you know what is really true and what's not true. Having said that, I'd like to welcome back the none other than our Asian counterpart, you know, the guy <laughs> that, that I respect tremendously in our practice, uh, Dr. Qinglong Zhang. And Dr. Zhang, um, yes. we're talking about thyroiditis and Hashimoto's sure. condition. We're talking about how things begin to come about. So at the end of the day, you know, this condition is one that is becoming far more prevalent, particularly in this Correct. country, as you said early on in the program. And what we want to deal with, and this Wednesday evening, you'll be doing our uh, online presentation. Our, our online, online presentation. Mm-hmm. And so let's talk a little bit more about uh, the differences, if you will. Is Hashimoto's thyroiditis hypothyroidism? Is mm-hmm. hypothyroidism Hashimoto's thyroiditis? There's a difference, isn't there? Um, good question. I would say yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because the hypothyroid is underactive thyroid. So Hashimoto disease is also under uh, reactive uh, thyroid. So that means Hashimoto is only one of many disease, many different kinds of hypothyroidism problem. So it's one of them. So why? Because Hashimoto disease, the, the, uh, the reason that we always want to find the reason or the cause to the problems. So Hashimoto, even since, since Hashimoto is an, uh, uh, hypothyroid, but actually the real problem is not thyroid problem. It's underlying, it's have the, it's autoimmune problem. It's all the liver functions, adrenal function, it's a pituitary function, it's all a kidney function. All these function, all in function, contribute to Hashimoto disease. That's why a lot of people say, okay, I have the symptoms. I don't have, I don't, I don't have any thyroid problem. I don't have the other issues. So it's because symptoms, I will tell you, I will tell you guys which kind of symptoms Hashimoto can have. You know, it's very interesting. I'm going to throw something yeah. in uh, with yeah. us. You know, it's always been fascinating to me 
the connections between different types of situations. In a true hypothyroid condition, hypo meaning low functioning, uh, what you see clinically, if you really look for it, is it leads to a decrease in production of progesterone. And we know that progesterone, testosterone, and estrogens are critical, but they have to be in a balance. So what you end up with is something called an estrogen dominus. Too much estrogen, not enough progesterone. And, mm-hmm. But that, where that comes from is something that we've talked about over time is, uh, in a simply uh, called the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands, if they're not working well enough to – initiate that cycle because at the end that's what causes your thyroid to work as well the the adrenal the the low function adrenal system for all of us men and women produce uh progesterones and we need mm-hmm. the progesterone to be able to uh balance all kinds of things and estrogens and so forth so when you see a hypothyroid condition most often generally it's there's a weak adrenal system or a hypoadrenic pattern that leads to a decrease in progesterone. And so subsequently, all the other conditions, the increased estrogens and so forth, are now much more predisposed, if you will, to uh, a Hashimoto's condition. And, you know, the, 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 the hypothyroidism, where that mechanism comes also goes to the liver. And there's something called a glucuronidase pathway that it affects, and it prevents estrogen from being detoxified or broken down because estrogen is toxic. And so if the liver is not working and people who have sluggish liver, they're eating things they shouldn't eat, the Mm -hmm. liver's inflamed, then not only estrogens, but other hormones can't be broken down. And now you have an estrogen dominant situation. But, you know, this is where you see the, and then we can talk about the thymus and, and estrogen causing the thymus, which is your immune system to break down. And we yep. can get into that relative to everything that's going on right now as well. And then the development of goiters and so forth. Going back to what you talked about with halides, because mm-hmm. you know the, the competition halides, again, are heavy elements. And mm-hmm. iodine is a halide. The thyroid needs iodine. And now you got a problem because of this autoimmune reaction. Anyway, I wanted, to set the, I wanted to set the stage because I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. And yeah, see yeah, how I do that. And so (laughs) at the end of the day, so when we're talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you know, an inflammatory autoimmune condition, basically, um, we're talking about a a puzzle. Puzzle. Yes. I wouldn't talk about the autoimmune meal. Uh, I would say more that you have to think about your gut, your gut, your gut, because 85% immunity in your gut. So autoimmune means your body, uh, your body don't know which is enemy, which is the bacteria, which virus, they attack all, they could attack yourself. Your immunity is unbalanced. Just like Dr. Rosell told you guys, the estrogen and progesterone is not balanced. We have to balance your gut then to build up immunity and then to, 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 to uh, treat the thyroid problem, treat the Hashimoto's. You know, it's an interesting uh, situation. The immunological responses throughout the body has a lot to do with a, a gland that's called the thymus gland, and it's, it's right behind the breastbone, the chest bone. And when we're born, that thymus is actually pretty good shape. It's big, it's solid. Uh, that's why children have, one of the reasons that children have such very strong immune systems. As we get older and because of the accumulation of stresses, because of the things that we're exposed to, because of our dietary patterns, uh, our ongoing medications, if you will, because we, we seem to want to uh, look for that magic bullet, you know, the, uh, uh, the antibiotic, the drug, the vaccine that is going to uh, cure everything. The problem is that that immune system is being beat up over time. And so now you have a thymus that if you look at it closely and if you really want to treat some of these immune systems, particularly Hashimoto's, that thymus is part of the connection. It's an autoimmune connection. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we've, we've established the estrogen nob- dominance, you know, in the role of, of Hashimoto's. And, but the, uh, a, a lot of it stems from the estrogen effect on, and as we were talking about earlier, on directly onto the thymus gland. And so when we understand that, we understand how important it is to make sure that we have hormonal balance. And there's a lot of reasons. And this is what I wanted to ask you the question. All of that to ask you a question. 
you know, uh, mm-hmm. why, why are the things that you see, how come, why is it, other than the, the, the levels of toxicity, why is it that hormones, in your opinion, are so unbalanced relative to physiology, balanced because of, of herbal uh, exposures, unbalanced because of, of uh, stresses in the body. What do you see that would suggest to you that this patient has a Hashimoto's pattern or has an, uh, a thyroid immune problem? Oh, based on the patient's symptoms, based on patient, because I trust medicine use a lot of different way to detect the patient's problems in yes. inside out. We can see from the eye, for example, if, if you, uh, the eyebrows, right? So if you, you look at a particular mirror and see your eyebrows, if you are loose, the, get loose, the outside of the eyebrows, please check your thyroid. The other, the other one third of your eyebrow. Eyebrow, yes. Mm-hmm. Check your thyroid. I don't want to say 100% right. I would say 99% right. I agree so with you. Lose, Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Yes. And also, same thing that people lose hair. The hair can get losing hair. So, you know, in the summer, it's very, it's very normal and common that, you know, the hair loss a little bit more. But how you're not supposed, when you calm the hair, you're not supposed to say, oh my God, it's a handful of hair there. It's mm-hmm. thyroid function. So the function can hold the hair very well. And then you, your body cannot absorb a nutrient from you, you're supposed to absorb because your hormone is not balanced. And also when you see that people under the eye, under the eye can see a little bit dark. Because the liver is not functional, remember T4 and T3, T4 convert to T3 in the liver. If your liver is not functioning and then you saw the eye, you, you'll probably check your thyroid problem too. So the eyes would be, are, are they going to be dark or are they going to be swollen or are they going to be both? Swollen and a dark, both. Both. I get both. So, you know, everybody that's listening to us right now is looking at the mirror. And they're, right. seeing, okay, they're, they're seeing if their eyebrows have thinned out in the outer one third and they're looking at their eyes to say, okay, my eyes puffy, you know, yeah. are they dark and so forth. And actually there's a distinguishing piece, which is, is, uh, about what we were talking about. The, if the eye is dark in the lower portion, but in close to where the nose is, that's actually adrenal function. If the eye is dark underneath it, then we're looking more with liver, and if it's swollen mm-hmm. underneath this liver, we're on the top of the eye, is kidney function. Kidney function, correct, kidney function. But no matter what, as long as you feel some swelling or the dark around the eye, no matter as the liver, no matter as the kidney, so we see it all affect the thyroid too, of the thyroid. Because thyroid is very sensitive to endocrine organ, endocrine organ, organ. But so we see thyroid is, I always tell the patient, thyroid is your thermostat. So, for example, I have some patient when sit down in the room with a consultation, the patient will tell me, oh, your room is cold. Your room, I don't feel, I feel chilly here. Actually, it's not. Actually, it's because of thyroid function. So, based upon the patient to tell me, I said, okay, I can, in my mind, I said, okay, probably the patient has thyroid function problem. Then I ask them more questions that become symptoms. Do you have, do, do you have a constipation? Do you have any muscle weakness? Um, do you have any weight gain, even though you don't eat too much food? Some patients tell me, you know what? Even though I drink water, I gain weight. I gain weight because your metabolism rate is very low. So if you have hypothyroid problem, there's a common symptoms is your metabolism rate is very low, and then you cannot get rid of the, the water from the body called swelling. Sounds like your weight gain, gain weight, but it's actually gain the water, water retention, the problem. So also you feel depressed, I feel very tired, the fatigue, uh, you feel very dry, you know, the, the skin is dry. And another thing is a lot of people forget, your dry heel, your heel is dry. It's also compared to the thyroid department too. And the, the heart rate is slow, your puffy face, we talked about that already, and the hoarse voice. When your voice is a horse, that means not a new, not enough moisture there. And same thing, the, the, is your metabolism is so low, they don't have enough moisture on the, on the voice and the vocal force, and they have a horse voice. And the same thing, and the last but not the least, as a very common one is your HDL and LDL problem. It's a very high cholesterol and a very LDL, and which is can raise your heart rate, the, the risk of the heart disease. All the symptoms above, I can tell 
above eighty five percent, the patient has a thyroid problem, problem, and also combined, the patient is autoimmune. Do you have any other autoimmune problem, or for example, rheumatoid, and Sjogren's, and celiac, and SIBO? SIBO also can problem too. Yes. Yeah, it's over overgrow the the bacteria in the gut. And the gut can, same thing we talk about the 85% immunity in the gut. If your gut is not very functional and then your immunity is low, the body is kind of distinguished, distinguished from the, the good thing, good things in the body and also bad things in the bacteria and the virus. Well, you know, here, and then people have to realize that the intestinal tract, the immune system, uh, 75% of it is right there. And we're going to come up and we're going to talk a little bit more about all of this. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live. My guest today, Dr. Zhang, and he's bringing some insights that you wouldn't have thought about otherwise. Don't go away. We'll be right yes. back. Washington's Mall, 105.9 FM, WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live as you do every Sunday on the Eastern Seaboard at 11 a.m. Make sure your friends and family know about that. Join us. And, you know, at any time you have any questions other than the ones that we answer for you on the air, and feel, please feel free to call us anytime, regardless if you're on topic or not, uh, simply go to rosellcare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellcare.com. Or if you'd like to and you want something to respond a little faster, call the office, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. And ask to talk to one of our, our great practitioners, and they will get back to you with whatever information is necessary. And as always, I'd like to extend my gratitude, my thanks uh, to our military and the people that are out there protecting us on the streets right now. We do have a country that is being challenged, and you're putting yourself at risk for all of us. We thank you so very, very much for all that you do. Dr. Zhang, yes, the this, this Wednesday evening, you're going to be doing a presentation on Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I mean, we've talked, we could actually talk about this and pick each part uh, totally apart over a period of, of uh, another two hours, if you would. Um, That's right. We talked about you know production of estrogens; they're not being handled properly. We're talking the immunological response from the gut. We're talking about thymus, uh, you know, one of the central regulatory immune uh, systems in the body. We're talking mm -hmm. about you know the predispositions of, of uh, uh, due to lowered vitamin D levels and so forth. But, Nutrition part. Mm -hmm. That's right. Before I give your presentation away, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people are going to be interested and what you have to say. And by the way, we will send you this program so you can watch it in the privacy of your own home. All you got to do is go to rosellcare.com, register for it, and we'll send it to you. Uh, love to do that. It's our gift to you. Dr. Zhang, what are you going to be yes. talking about? How are you going to handle this uh, this presentation? So I house, um, I would do this person from the five, the five parts. The part one, I'll talk about the water thyroid gland, the function. And then part two is I'll tell you how you can come to the comprehensive re-evaluation for the health thyroid. Part three, we talk about the Hashimoto was the reason we talk about all that we talk about the, today. I have a little bit much more than that. I talked about what's the reason. I, if you know the reason, we can treat the reason, we can treat the cause, we can avoid the, 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 harm, the harm, harmful, um, problems. So the last one we we'll talk about the how can I last not uh, not last last two, and we we'll talk about how can I treat you? How can we purge to treat the thyroid problem? So last but not the least, it's almost always my uh, features. I will tell you from Chinese medicine how can you do at home to improve your thyroid function. So I talk about the reflexology, um, allergy. So tell you. Um, so how can you do at home, uh, you, you know, use the home the tapes and improve your thyroid function? You know, it's interesting that so many people have an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's and or they have other conditions and they keep treating the symptoms and ke instead of looking for the cause. And in today's world, we keep zeroing in on a couple things, stress levels, decreased adrenal function, affecting other pathways. We're looking at deficiencies across the board in vitamin D because nobody goes outside anymore. And, you know, by the way, people, the, the, if your skin is dark, you know, whether you're black population, you're South American or whatever it is, you have a greater predisposition. The reason for it, as you've heard me say many times, is because that's there to protect you and because that skin generally is in the tropics. 
You know, you get a fair face like me that goes into that area, and I'm going to burn like uh, a red lobster. You know, <laughs> but with with you all in this area where the sunlight isn't direct, you suffer more. But this is a great program. It's one that I want you to pay attention to and go online and register for. Uh, for. My guest today, Dr. Chinglong Zhang, and you're brilliant. I love you, my friend. Thank you. It's great. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Remember, we do this program for you. We love you. Bye. Okay. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.